It's been a while since I've done a video on my turtles here at home, so I'll give you a quick recap. I have four three-stripe mud turtles, all local uh, caught turtles here in Florida. Um, one male and three females. Uh, they're all basking here in this photograph on a piece of cypress wood. Uh, the furthest away from the camera is the male. Uh, you can see the uh, back of his shell facing you with his tail exposed. The shell was damaged by some kind of predator. Uh, the far left is Esther, also a, a rescue off the street. On the far right is Big Muddy. That's the uh, matriarch of the tank and the, and the oldest tent turtle as far as uh, we know, uh, about eight years old. And then right next to her is Fern, the most uh, damaged turtle. She was hit by a car. Uh, they reside in a rather large acrylic tank, 8 feet long, 3 feet wide, and about 17 inches high with about 12 inches of water. Sand substrate, lots of Mopani wood, uh, moss, live and plastic vegetation, a sandbox for egg laying, and also for, uh, for basking. And now for the video. Here you see Romeo uh, on that same cypress wood basking by himself. You can see the rear of his shell there uh, where the tail is exposed. That damage was probably caused by a, a raccoon or some other kind of predator. Romeo spends uh, most of his hours either basking or sleeping. And uh, perhaps one hour a day he dedicates to uh, eating or else uh, this, which uh, he does with all three females. So you might say he's got it made. Hugh Hefner of the turtle world. That's Fern. Uh, she's a rescue. She was uh, hit by a car uh, more than two years ago. Very badly damaged. I have some videos up just on Fern, so if you want to know more about her, feel free to uh, view them. That's Big Muddy, uh, the, uh, about eight years old. Rescued her as a hatchling. Um, now, she can get jealous uh, sometimes when Romeo mates with the other turtles. Uh, she hasn't been too much so in recent times, but Initially, when Romeo first came on the scene, she was not happy about it. Now, you'll see some behavior here, which makes me suspect that she still has uh, some jealousy when Romeo is, uh, here you can see her just crashing on top of him, uh, not very polite, probably having a few words with him and then, uh, and then moving on. And that's what Romeo likes to do, eat this, and uh, but mostly sleep. Here you see Muddy uh, on the far right side of the tank, uh, looking for food, and that's what she spends about 23 hours a day doing. Those are moss balls, those are round, those are live, uh, literally balls of moss. You can see a ghost shrimp uh, on each moss ball there to the right. Um, there, uh, besides ghost shrimp, there's also uh, quarry catfish and a few uh, darter fish. There's a lot of ghost shrimp in here, probably a couple dozen, maybe three dozen ghost shrimp, and some of them are quite large. They've uh, gotten along real well in here and generally escape uh, being eaten by the turtles uh, in order to become full grown and they reproduce in the tank and every once in a while I'll see some little tiny baby ghost shrimp uh, that have successfully hatched and escaped uh, predation. And Muddy, she just hunts, that's what she does all the time. It's a good thing, too, because uh, she uh, has a voracious appetite, and uh, she's a big eater, and she's a bit on the uh, overweight side, but uh, she's a terrific turtle. Here you see uh, three turtles. Uh, Esther on the far left there just got herself uh, some shrimp, and Muddy and Fern are to the right. Now, um, when they eat together like this, uh, there, there are sometimes hostilities that they compete for uh, the same morsel of food. Here's a little bit of a standoff between Esther and Muddy. Uh, ended peacefully. So there is some hostilities between uh, the, or among the turtles. They do bite each other sometimes. Uh, no injuries, but it does happen and it's not unusual. Um, I don't worry about it. You can see the catfish uh, zipping around in the background. That's Mopani wood. It's very heavy. It's, uh, it stays on the bottom, which is really nice. It looks good. It provides habitat and hiding. Moss grows on it. Uh, ghost shrimp all hide in it. The turtles use it for scratching. Turtles like to scratch their shells. They'll get under something that, uh, like a hard piece of wood and, uh, and just go at it like crazy, scratching their shells. I think that's just a natural process. As they grow, the shell probably itches, and so they, they like to scratch. It's Esther there. It's Fern, uh, on the far right of the tank, and her reflection. Coming over, hoping I'm going to give her something to eat. She 
she's probably the most tame of the turtles because I had to deal with her, uh, handled her so much when uh, she was injured. Uh, she is the only turtle uh, that I can rub her head and it doesn't bother and she loves it. She loves to have her head stroked and petted. The other turtles like to be scratched. They'll scratch their shells, but they don't like their, their heads touched. There's all three of them. Amazingly peaceful. It's not always that way when they're that close together. That green vegetation on the right there is some kind of, uh, no, it's not moss. I'm not sure what it is. It, it came in from the river. I put uh, string plants, hydrilla, whatever you want to call it, in this tank uh, for the turtles and the fish and other uh, other things um, come with that and that particular vegetation uh, came with the string plants. Uh, here you see Esther in her in that acrylic log, uh, underneath the log now, where uh, she claims uh, as her own. Any other turtle that uh, tries to share that log with her will be, get, will be bitten. The only turtle she'll share with is Romeo, the male. She will not share with the other two females. Here you see Esther uh, in the far left of the tank, far left corner of the tank, and she's uh, rummaging around in that, uh, there's a plastic plant there, and you can see some hydrilla mixed in with it. And there's Esther again in, in the, uh, underneath the cypress wood. And back to Muddy. Here she is balancing on a uh, piece of moss, moss ball doing what she does best, and that's hunting for food. The plant on the far left there is a plastic plant. Plastic plants, of course, are a little harder to destroy, and they hold their form better, and they're great for climbing and, and uh, that sort of thing. Uh, the real live plants will often uh, grow into them, and uh, you'll get a mix of plastic and real. Found Muddy as a little hatchling uh, about almost eight years ago. Brought her home and, and, uh, and kept her. And uh, she seems to be a happy camper here in the tank. She's laid many, 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 many eggs and had many, many hatchlings, uh, all of which have been released into the wild. And there's Fern. She still has problems with eating. Uh, she has issues with aiming her head. Uh, her, she often misses the food that she's trying to bite. Her mouth does not open all the way, only halfway maybe at the most. So eating is a challenge for her, but um, you see her getting blown by the outflow of the filter there in that corner. Now those two logs, they're made of acrylic and she resides in uh, one or either of those logs. Muddy kind of uh, sleeps uh, in different places. She doesn't really have one favorite place. So she's all over the tank. More of a nomad. But Fern likes uh, to sleep in uh, one of those logs, and Esther, of course, prefers that cypress log. Romeo sleeps uh, on the bottom, usually under the Mopani wood. Can't even find him. Romeo is, is, the, uh, is the male, the only male in the tank. There's the basking platform uh, with a ramp in there as well, in front of the basking platform. There's the uh, vegetation mix of live and plastic on the far left, and Fern is making the way across. And, uh, and that's just about it. Hope you've uh, enjoyed this uh, update video.